things on susanna offered by george family thanks give master sake right of jesus for the birthday blessings on gloria elizabeth offered by gloria elizabeth and family mass to mother mary for the good health of jyoti rosarina offered by harry mass for late christopher santiago offered by silvia santiago Mass for late Jaswinder offered by Sheryl and family. Mass for late Gladys Joseph offered by Lohit and Nagesha. Mass for late Danny Xavier offered by Mary Kavita. Let's pray for these intentions and also for our personal intentions in this holy mass.
for the entrance. Please all join in singing. Yes, I shall arise, number three, thirty-seven, three, thirty-seven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear Reverend Fathers, the seminarians, my dear sisters, and the people of God. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the holy season of Lent. This season is meant to prepare us for the celebration of the Paschal Mystery. It is a spiritual journey or the annual retreat, the 40 days for the people of God. We all will be contemplating on the sufferings and death of Jesus in a special way. Today's readings tells us, it is not the outward sign, signs that is important, but interior of our heart that is important. True love, devotion, commitment to God, in the same way, our neighbor. Let us pray in a special way that our loving God molds our hearts to return to him in a meaningful way, especially serving him, serving our own neighbor with the cardinal works of religious prayer, fasting, and alms. With these thoughts, my dear brothers and sisters, let us enter into this Holy Eucharistic celebration. Now, let us ask the Lord to forgive all our sins and failures and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. 
I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Mass 109, 109. Oh. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 12 to 18. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in sign, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, Assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride a chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. 
Your response, have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash me completely from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sin. Response, have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. My transgressions, truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? Response. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Response. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Response. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Second reading, a reading from the setter of letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 26 to 2. Brethren, we are ambassadors for the Christ, for Megan King has appealed through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him believe in sin. We knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God, working together with him. Then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I listen to you, and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the time Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for gospel acclamation. Number 160 on page 49. 160. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 18. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people, in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray 
in the synagogues and the street corners, that they may see being by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward, but when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Lent in Catholic tradition, a favorable time given to us in the church to return to the Lord with all our heart. Pope Benedict once described, Lent is the Christian journey which we call a pilgrimage of repentance, conversion, and renewal. These 40 days of Lent recalls on us the 40 years of Israel's sojourn in the desert, which is a time of testing and also purification and closeness to Yahweh. Today, the first reading, the prophet Joel calls us, or it is an invitation to us to return to him with all our hearts. The reading says that our God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger. It is with this, it is with the exhortation Today, we use the formulas, repent and believe in the gospel, or remember man that you are dust, and it is to dust you shall return. The second reading today, St. Paul exhorts, be reconciled to God. The Corinthians, uh, exhortation to Corinthians, he says, not to receive the grace of God in vain. Rather, it is to prepare the hearts and minds for the grace of the work and bear fruit. Secondly, St. Paul says, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, Lent is the time of fruitfulness of Jesus' conversion is not about aiming our outward works. Well, today, not only in our church, all over the world, in a special way, we have come prepared, especially meditating the death on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. He did it with a great cause. It is to save me and you. That is the reason why we all look very serious and 
put on on our faces and also in our heart sincerely sincerely desiring our own conversion to imitate jesus in whatever way possible but here he says jesus it is not in sack cloth what prophet joel is telling we know very well there are so many people who do mortification in this 40 days when we look at the pilgrimages they visit the churches as our pope francis is telling visiting of 14 churches maybe some they may visit within the diocese one church you go to yamjala you go to gajwel you come here some people go to gunadala some to nirmalagiri some to velankanni in nagapatnam look at the mortification that they walk on the knees the physical mortification it is not something that we want to gain materially i don't accept i don't believe that it is a true conversion it is for the true conversion in the heart and mind and soul that people do this mortification but jesus says it is not the sack cloth it is not the fasting so we all will be fasting today but sometimes if something is there on the table maybe avakai and some of you know if you feel if you are tempted eat it don't worry but that is not the fasting that is what jesus says and we wear the ashes remember man dust indeed you are and it is to dust you shall return my dear friends all of us have heard the stories miserable stories of corona pandemic when they were affected when we were all affected we remember nothing in the world is eternal our own god and his teaching is important that song there is nothing that is what we have experienced during this pandemic many people telling dust man you are and it is to dust you shall return the mortification but what jesus is intending is at the conversion of heart the interior conversion with the visible signs visible signs if you are doing anything that is charity let your other hand know about it the kind gestures the body the parts of the body is given by our own creator the kind gestures the eyes of mercy the true compassionate words our hands and charity should move to the charity towards our neighbor and our works of penance not because somebody sees and appreciates to us so let us pay real attention to the interior conversion and interior repentance therefore my dear brothers and sisters let us take these 40 days of lent as the priests and sisters and all of you go for annual retreat let us think it is an annual retreat of the people of god it is in imitation of jesus 40 days in the wilderness moses went to the mountain to seek the face of god for 40 days in prayer and fasting the people of israel it is a preparation of uh, themselves the entry into the promised land eliza also fasted for 40 days and we are fasting for 40 days it is to celebrate the feast of easter the christian passover of jesus victory over sin satan and death let us devote our lives in prayer fasting serving which are the cardinal works of our religious life my dear brothers and sisters let us pray that the lord jesus gives all of us a lively faith a firm hope 
ఎఫ్ వన్ చారిటీ అండ్ ఏ గ్రేట్ గ్రేట్ లవ్ ఫర్ జీజస్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ లెట్ ఎస్ ఆస్క్ జీజస్ టు టేక్ ఫ్రమ్ ఆల్ ఫ్రమ్ అవర్ సెల్స్ ఆల్ the lukewarmness in the meditation of our word of god and dullness in prayer ask the lord to give us fervor and delight in thinking of him and his graces and fill all of us with compassion for others especially those in need that we may respond with generosity Amen. Let us all stand for the prayer of the faithful. As we begin the season of Lent, a time of grace and growth, let us pray for God's blessing to return to Him with all our heart and as the prophet joel exhorts us today saying have mercy on us o lord have mercy have mercy on us o lord have mercy for our pope bishops and pa- and all pastors of the church that they may be living examples of reconciliation with god and with one another during this season season of lent let us pray to the lord have mercy on us o lord have mercy for christians all over the world that they make use of this season of lent as a time of spiritual growth and return to the ways and values of the lord let us pray have mercy on us o lord have mercy for our parish community that we may be strengthened by this to make sacrifices and contribution to the feeding of the hungry and sheltering the homeless in our parish We pray to the Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy. For all consecrated religious all over the world, that they may continue to experience the joy of the gospel and the enthusiasm to serve you in the poor and the needy. We pray to the Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy. For Christians' youth, that they may be empowered with the holy spirit to courageously follow the christ and bear witness to his values we pray to the lord have mercy on us o lord have mercy let us pray in a special way for the end of this madness of war between Russia and Ukraine, our Pope Francis inviting us all, especially in these 40 days, to pray in a special way. We pray to the Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us also pray for all the families that are affected by the war, especially our own country, young men. also have lost their lives let us pray for the families for the consolation and god's mercy to them let us pray have mercy on us o lord have mercy let us add our own intentions in silence lord we thank you for blessing us with an with another season of lent we ask you to bless us with the spirit of perseverance in prayer christian penance and works of charity and thus participate in your paschal mystery worthily 
we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I request you all to please keep standing. Now we have the blessing of the ashes by the Archbishop. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessings on your servants who are marked with these ashes. As they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now we have the imposition of the ashes on the foreheads. I request you all in the center to come in a single line and the priest will come to you for the imposition of the ashes. Hymn number 773. Remember man, you are dust. Please all join in singing. Have mercy on the people. 
because you claim for your own. The people who have sinned against you, remember man, just indeed you are, and it is to dust you shall
sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good upon his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devotely the passion of your son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor. And so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with the countless angels. As with one voice of praise, uh, as we are clay. Number 109. Holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples say take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples say take this all of you and drink from me for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to this second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect especially with the most blessed virgin mary mother of god with saint joseph as pauls and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray o lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth together with your servant Francis our pope and Paul Anthony archbishop the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion o merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their pa- at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to our Apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only save the world, and my soul shall be healed. Number seven six nine seven sixty nine. Oh, 
and your majesty. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Light of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, heal me. But in thy bones, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malignant enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, so that with your saints I may praise you for all eternity. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. I take this opportunity to thank His Grace. Most Reverend Dr. Paul Anthony for coming over here and celebrating this Mass for us and leading us into prayer and repent, repentance and helping us to understand the meaning of Lenten season. Thank you, Your Grace. And thank you all the fathers who have come celebrated and all the sisters and brothers and all the people of God. May God bless you abundantly. May God lead you all through this Lenten season so that you may experience the risen presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bow your heads for the Lord's blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O Lord, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards of you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessings of the Lord come upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to the Lord. Lord. For the final hymn, please all join in singing God of Mercy and Compassion, number 781. 781. Let me 